This lecture concerns the elements of engineering, psychology, and psychiatry. I wish to apply a particular psychiatry. It's two seen as three. Three elements, inefficient, one, two, efficient, a state of trauma or pressure. Quantum mechanically, this is essentially the conjugate of three healthy things and two sick things, which is the proper psychodynamics of healthy normal people. It's the weighted symmetry under electromagnetism, the varying random force that randomizes behavior, keeps it from periodically aggregating over the periodic cycles of the circadian rhythms, the months, the days, and the years. The elements of the, even the uh, Earth's uh, oscillations under mutation, precession, rotation, revolution, Coriolis effect, and um, uh, seismic shifts to the Earth's magnetic core and other seismic shifts. Uh, what I'd like to say about the elements of engineering, psychodynamics, and psychology as a composed of elements, and we used to consider each element in terms, kind of an outline of each element. The first one I'd like to bring up is uh, we'll learn to use, apply these different therapies. Each one has a different application, different therapeutic models in different ways, in different forms, different structural stresses, use of language, gesture, custom, and demeanor as affecting the different uh, therapies. I don't want to go into a list of the therapies. We'll describe those in a different lecture. Let's proceed to the elements of psychodynamics and psychology. The first one I like to drag attention to the classical ones, like, for instance, projection and uh, uh, transference. We all know what those mean, but let's draw, draw, draw our attention to drag, which is the uh, inherent... In Freudian analysis, defined as the inherent ability or tendency of an organism to copy its surroundings. If you see another be person behaving a certain way, you tend to copy them. And drag is more complex than what you might think, because in engineering physics, we all know that drag is nine-dimensional. Nine dimensions being a tensor, it has exists rotational, uh, translational, and also um, complex compound effects. This is uh, three coordinate. Rotations, translation, taking in sets of ones and twos, also in threes, like the stress, the strain, and the shear in the uh, strain in the uh, tensile matrix. What is seen as a more complete whole is that uh, drag may involve rotational effects, which are quantum mechanical, and translational effects, which are relativistic. The rotational and quantum mechanical effects are two-dimensional, which are inherently quantum, general relativistic at the node, hence are weighted across the non-node points, and quantum mechanical at the node, meaning that they're not general relativistic and quantum mechanical at the node, and at the heightened points they're quantum mechanical and non-general relativistic, the exact opposite, if you will, meaning that uh, the two tends to modes tend to oscillate around one another, but quantum mechanically we define uh, rotation as something which is indirect, which tends to act around a fulcrum or an arm, meaning that the force is indirect. In engineering, what this means is that it tends to rotate the object, where it says dead-on strike is relativistic and tends to displace it. The rotation does not involve translation, it involves rotation, the rotational force, the torque. In relativity, the direct contact means translation is indeed a force. Quantum mechanically, we see that a rotational effect does not change it, a, a direct general relativistic force does. One is real, one is unreal at the nodal point, and at the non nodal point, one is un unreal and then real. So it oscillates back and forth. Not that the two tend to lend to each other, but at some instantiation point, you find something as rotational or translational. In twister analysis, this is more simply defined as a reduction of coordinates through the uh, newman Penrod in penrose infeld equations, the uh, null tetrad. Although I don't wish to formally apply the null tetrad to... Uh, uh, Freudian analysis is indeed applicable. It's a little bit hairy. It's 61 dimensional. involves a number of equations that are fairly complex, and I don't believe there's any richness in deriving the principles of them. Just considering the symmetries are important, but the equations are a bit lengthy. Now, what I do wish to apply here is the fact that you may get different elements which are multi component wise, symmetric and anti symmetric, and skew symmetric in the sense that. Uh, you have something that is both a stimulus, which is both symmetric and asymmetric. It means it would tend to rotate something, but it also tends to displace it. 
in the other chord, in X and Y, for example. In the third dimension, you can have an, the third chord, which is anti skew symmetric, meaning that the three to pretend to cancel out to nothing, a symmetry operator, which is real, but whose components are involve three different forces given in three different ways, producing nine different effects, or eight different effects, I believe, which is indeed psychiatric. This is indeed the way the general principles of codon theory evolve the uh, principles with schizophrenia is in that the, uh, the disorder attempts to imitate the uh, the Murray Gell man's eightfold way symmetrically bioevolutionarily wise as a genetic mutation which attempts to imitate physical theory um, what this means from a more complete sense considering each object is six different things six measurables one two three four five six you have one mass two respective elements of the force, three vector components for X, Y, Z, four uh, elements of the spinor for symmetric and anisymmetric, five electromagnetic equations, and six uh, duplicate uh, force equations to duplicate the force to nothing since force is the only thing which can move something. That would be seen as a photonic effect or a uh, Bremsterlung effect, a radiative uh, non- fading a uh, Bremsling wave effect. I haven't really gotten that far in my physical analysis of Freudian tensor analysis. And this drag is essentially simplistic in the sense that it may be viewed as a, a creature's innate ability to imitate something. Let's move on to some other elements. We'll imitate a uh, NEM, which is the smallest physical sensation which produces a definable a subconsciously integratable result, a PNEM, which is uh, subliminally integratable, and an NNEM, which is consciously integratable. For instance, someone knocking at the door is probably a PNEM, the sound of an o- something moving is probably an NNEM, and a regular NEM is probably just a, the fact that the door exists. So there's different elements of consciousness, subconsciousness, and subliminal. I mean, uh, uh, consciousness, unconsciousness, and subconsciousness, the three different stages. Indeed, everything is arranged in threes, even in psychology. As Freudian analysis indicates, there are three, the oral stage, the genital stage, and the uh, anal stage. There is likewise the child, middle age, and adult, puberty and adult. There is likewise the uh, Oedipus complex, and there is likewise the... uh, Ego, the id, and the super ego. Likewise, there's the strain, the stress, and the shear in uh, drag analysis of Freudian tensors. Likewise, in other three forms, there are also three coordinates to consider. Each composite sociological effect being composed of three holes, except for IQ. These include things such as religion, ethnicity, uh, personality. Each thing is composed of three things as a cyclical ag- aggregate. Is simply a primary thing subsisting of three composite things, then subsisting of nine and fading backwards and oscillating at the same time. Meaning that each religion, for example, is essentially one religion defined in three different religious ways, but in a weakened sense as a composite whole adding to the whole, and then nine things again in a, in a stronger sense as a force equation, as a platonic form, duplicating to nothing. I wish to say something about the duplicate here. A duplicate is basically the sense that a node cannot exist in a, in a heightened form because it has to oscillate, meaning that a flatline form does not exist because it does not oscillate, hence cannot cancel to zero, does not exist physically. The flatline form is a duplicate, meaning that something is perceived twice has no, virtually no effect on someone as a learned effect meaning that uh, x squared is essentially delta x in uh, di- dialectic and uh, platonic and um, duplicate mathematics. Also, x cubed is x plus delta x, a non-existent form is contradictory as a waveform bound as a composite whole of the universe. Uh, the duplicate effect in subset theory, meaning that... Uh, if you're told that something is dangerous once, you're really scared of it, but if you're told twice, you don't believe it, there's a negative ingrained recoiling effect. In the dynamics of proper health, three dimensions, this means that when a person is biased one way towards something and two ways against it, they have a cushion for a negative interaction, a richness, and for definable uh, responses. In two dimensions, it's only a positive and negative, that's mental illness like schizophrenia, 
there's no neutral or disequilibrium elements, so everything cancels. You inherently get nothing. Quantum mechanically, it's generally it's unhealth because the organism is essentially healthy. Quantum mechanically, it is unhealthy by the Heisenberg uncertainty principle. Also, by its quantum states, what is healthy is unhealthy dialectically as well in symmetric and antisymmetric forms. Henceforth, you have psychiatry as a form of ultimate health, as an evolutionary ideal, according to the Murray Gell Man's Eightfold Way, is inherently un- unhealthy quantum mechanically. That is the weakness in psychiatry. It does not exist in normal forms. Nevertheless, trauma in a normal form is defined as two health, three unhealthy. Likewise, in schizophrenia and other psychiatric disorders, that's when I was to amend my statement that schizophrenia is a disorder. It has indeed been proven by, by Cloninger. Also, I wish to say that uh, bipolar is also a disorder. In fact, I think that most psychiatric disorders are, in fact, just a disorders, all being an aggregate family of uh, physiologically and physically sim- uh, sim- uh, similar ideas. Uh, schizophrenia is essentially a thought disorder. Bipolar is essentially a mood disorder. With respect to the tensile forces, this means that the two are very similar. The, but the differentiation point is that an emotion is five-dimensional, a thought disorder is four-dimensional. Emotions, that's five being the magnetic, the Maxwell equations are five plus one, four Maxwell equations and the continuity equation. The symmetry rule for Maxwell is emotions being electromagnetic as neuron, neural signals, and four-dimensional being Aristotelian rule of force as logic as a thought disorder. In this sense, the two forms are highly opposed. You might argue that bipolar is actually nine disorders. I tend to think that it isn't. I would, um, also, the other forms I wish to consider is something, we'll just call it something. I used to have names for these things, but there's so many of them. Uh, you can't really think of names. I used to want to go through and name each one, but for this lecture, I'm just going to say something. Something which is barely perceivable, it has a profound effect, is quantum mechanically something which, like a very small stimulus, which has a very disturbing effect, called a nuance or something. That's one element to consider in my psychodynamic theory of psychology and psychiatry. Another thing is something which is... Uh, very bothersome, but which is ultimately congealing as an accepted whole, meaning that something may be merged as both fluently pleasant and fluently unpleasant and have a more unpleasant effect in the long term, but um, also is accepted ad hoc, meaning that the pleasant effect overrides the unpleasant effect and it kind of sticks in like a thorn or a prick or something. Another effect I wish to consider is the effect of a... Uh, something which tends to uh, cause a person to waver uncertainly. This is something which essentially forces a person to choose the choice of con artistry, which means that con artistry being this state of mind that something is three-dimensional, when in fact should be seen as one-dimensional or two-dimensional, as dichotomous or unit-wise, as an integrated sensation, as a gestalt whole, and we don't want to get much too into therapy because each different discipline of therapy interprets each one of these variables, such as drag, PNEMs, MNEMs, and NEMs, and uh, the other ones I have, some things that I outlined as different in interpretation and measure and importance and relevance in the way you interpret them therapeutically and how to treat each one therapeutically. But another system I wish to consider or uh, subjects I wish to, objects I wish to consider is uh, something which is uh, um, neurotic, but which is ultimately accepted purely because it is neurotic. It is something which is uh, has the ingrained signature of being different, henceforth acceptable, because it contrad- it balances out the acceptable. And entertainment being defined as the opposite of boredom leads to a more congealing averaging whole, like 2 plus 4 equals 3. It's a little bit more abstract than that, but let's just assume it's it's more like 2 plus 8 equals 5 or something, or 2 plus 6 equals 4. In any case, uh, I also wish to draw attention to Catholic norms, which are essentially the Catholic religion is 2 up and 1 down, or 1 up and 2 down, the states are rather complexly defined. It's defined as a symmetric three-form duplicated across six different 
elements, meaning that there's one up, two down, and then one down, two up. But each one has a different term, so you can combine the Catholic elements into six different terms. Like, for instance, happiness, sadness, mellowness, then sadness, happiness, unmellowness, with a slight variation to create a duplicate three form into a sixth form. This is more complex than you would at first think because the subcategory of that which has to be congealed whole within the integrated form is a five form. Five forms is emotional or extremely complex because four, for instance, happiness, sadness, madness in the fourth form, and then a fifth form to find a... Uh, the reason it was quite hard to think about is because you can't really define that in terms of reality because uh, reality is only four-dimensional or at least three-dimensional, meaning that neither... The five form as an emotion is inherently asymmetric with respect to any form of measurable reality. This is the effect the electroweak theory uh, force has on things, makes things inherently unreal or unmeasurable, which leads into quantum mechanics, which leads into quantum string theory. Because quantum string theory is inherently the, op- the other two opposites negated. As a third alternative, you just juxtapose the two. I don't want to get too much of my theory of physics. We can move on to another object to consider. Another object to consider is a um, something which is uh, inherently true, hence and forth inherently binding, simply for its state of being true. In different therapies, you'll see this manifest as, say, something like you're bald and you're also dumb. Therefore, you also say the person tends to accept it because it's true and they accept the second part, too, as a chain this is more effective in things like holistic or gestalt, but you'll see it has application in Freudian, neo-Freudian behavioral and cognitive as well. I don't want to get too much into the disciplines of therapy. We'll discuss that in a separate lecture. Another element I wish to consider is that element of a tweak. I call it a tweak, which is basically something which um, is ingrainly judgmental, but which is disregarded because it is judgmental. It's kind of the opposite of some of the early things I've said before, the slight twist. I mean, you tend to, it's kind of like uh, hypothesis testing where you have the, the null hypothesis and the H1, where the two are fundamentally different with respect to sets and subsets and are not just the opposites of each other, but represent a statistical class for analysis. Likewise, the, the torg or whatever I called it, is essentially something much different than something which is accepted because it's neurotic, it's rejected because it's judgmental. The two are similar and asymmetric. It's a little bit complex to think about. We'll, when we get more into the mathematics of psychodynamics and psychotherapy with respect to the different disciplines, we'll analyze that in a more complete form mathematically. Incidentally, I wish to say that the nine matrix with respect to this form or an eight matrix or the other six matrices or five by one matrices are essentially... Um, constituent constants of measurable integration within sensation as integrated holes into th- ones into threes and then integrated again into nines, for example, meaning that it is essentially a tensile force as a sensation that impressed upon the organism broken into constituent holes. This may either be, that's why no one can, can create a human, com- a thinking computer is because in physics, biology borrows from the psychology of mind of physics, meaning that biology borrows from the fact that physics makes sense to bypass the fact that it needs to be organized because platonic thought concept analysis is indeed structured like the universe and indeed structured like life forms and indeed structured like thought and human psychology. All four are congruent. What I mean by saying that categories itself inherently physical and uh, quantum mechanical and general relativistic is that even the category of animals or the category of thought or emotions inherently imitates physics by the fractal rule. This may seem strange that uh, something as abstract as thought, like philosophy, may in fact be more physics than anything else. It is indeed true. Likewise, psychology is also physics. Likewise, psychiatry is also physics. Likewise, biology is also physics. So there's indeed a strong strain of fractaline repetitiveness amongst the different disciplines. Also, I would add a few more uh, uh, cognitive elements. We'll consider this briefly. I've come up with about 200 
I really believe there to be a good 800 of them to consider before you really start working with advanced stock dynamics in a thoroughly complete way. But we'll just go over about another 10 of them before I conclude this lecture. The uh, the other ones will be um, something which is uh, inherently negative and positive at the same time. Henceforth, it doesn't have any effect on the organism. Uh... That's a bit complex because by the nodal equation, you tend to think it would influence them in a rotationally uh, electromagnetic wave way, kind of like a, a rotating photon or something. It would tend to kind of spiral like a helix. I don't want to get too much into that, but there's other effects. I was Something which is recoilless, which is essentially something which... Uh, um, it's like Bremsschilling. It's an it's a Bessel function radiative term seen in psychology as something which is does not decrease with time. It uses this as a painful effect for most organisms. It can be defined as pleasure too. I believe that's essentially what an orgasm is. You ask me what an orgasm is. I say it's a a, a fusion of eating and defecating done in a physiological method that way that duplicates the two patterns, quantum mechanically, according to the three forces. Likewise, you say eating, defecating, and the orgasm are the three Freudian components. There are also the three quantum, the three force components taken juxtapositionally, biophysically, within the life system, according to the different forces. You may wonder at one point why something like the strong force would have a particular effect on something as large as an organism, since it inherently fades after about seven feet or whatever it's span is. It's more complex than that because quantum mechanically it has to have a very profound effect on life systems just as the Feynman uh, loop Feynman diagrams are visible through affect so is the strong force and the gravitational force both of which are indeed minuscule at uh, ordinary day to day levels of human interaction. Another thing I wish to consider is the uh, Something as a sensation which is taken as an undercurve, like an arabesque curve, meaning you have to accept it, but um, you do so willingly. Uh, I don't want to get too much in that theory. It involves dragon curves in Buddhist Dharma's philosophy and um, the method of inversion within pain methodology in military science. That belongs to another lecture. Um, I also wish to consider... Something which is uh, inherently beautiful is inherently desirable. It's been seen as a positive force. It's more complex than that because beauty is indeed not uh, is a bit subjective, or at least it's also inherently biological, like why everyone likes sex so much. Um, I don't want to get too much into that. That's another whole book in itself. Uh, something which is uh, inherently um, uh, causes a person to waver between two decisions instead of three to make them uncertain in a two-dimensional way, such as criticism. That's another element to consider. Something which uh, causes a person to disbelieve something, which is an emotional statement. That's another thing I wish to consider. Something which is... Uh, um, it can only have negative effects for being positive. It's another force to be considered, like it causes you to disbelieve in God because you believe in yourself is an example of something. Like tell people telling you to believe in yourself and not God. Um, something which is inherently uh, symmetric and anisymmetric, like uh, uh, positive pain and negative pain. Meaning it's a positive thing, which is either negative pain or positive pleasure or pain. That being said, it, it's both. It's a positive thing, kind of like an orgasm, we find it's painful, something like that, which is, has multiple components. Well, I already discussed that in another lecture. What that kind of means. Um, something which is inherently um, uh, causes a person to uh, think beyond the moment like uh, induces long-term memory. That's another thing to consider. Something which uh, induces a person to uh, to skip steps. This is inherently seen in the psychology of procrastination, mainly, whereas like sex procrastination, hitting on women, like where you see someone uh, 
the reason why they can't think about it very coherently, like hitting on women effectively, is every time they uh, meet someone, they have to start from a new, from a procedure, from getting to know someone all the way up to talking to sex. However, their mind jumps to sex at the end. You know, they try to work backwards, back to the original. They have to think backwards in the category. They can undo all the uh, attachment that is engendered after you fall in love with someone before you even meet them. You have to think un- unattach yourself to think back in the proper original state. Additionally, your mind tends to compound things backwards. Well, the symbols don't make any sense backwards because the logical force of Aristotelian Venn diagrams is not enforced in backward order. Not that it is in form of a set of concentric rings where you move inward, just that the logic doesn't necessarily hold over the uh, converse necessarily of each particular step. That is the psychology of procrastination. It has a different application in each different uh, therapeutic method. It's more general than a lot of other methods I consider. Something which is uh, which inherently you like, but which you also like to dislike. I mean, you use it as a binding force to negate things out to an even, like two and four is three, as average is two, as uh, something which is positive and negative, which you tend to be mellow about because you can refer to it either way. It brings out a sense of relief when you're in the two state opposed to the three state of health because you're in trauma. That's something to consider. Uh, something which is uh, inherently long and lengthy, but which you only get a piece of in memory, like only the ending or a conclusion. That's what Hemingway basically is. An artist that works that way. It's a form of aesthetics, really. Something which is uh, um, two-dimensional only, like fluid dynamics, or at least six-dimensional, a Catholic, and fluid dynamics is Catholic. Or something which is inherently only planar, such as schizophrenia. Now, what that means is that uh, you can never really reproduce a three form because the theory of two three form curves is not rich enough to encompass three form variation in the uh, TBK, the torsion binormal, uh, torsion normal TNB frame, the torsion normal binormal frame. It doesn't admit all forms, three forms of curvature simultaneously. Hence, it's not rich enough to encapsulate reality. That's what schizophrenia is, something which is planar. Uh, something which is only on face value valuable, which is in fact inherently worthless, is another thing to consider. Something which is uh, likable because it is weak is a form of charity. Um, that again, it refers to composites. Maybe people like power, it makes them feel more powerful. They can scale themselves that way. Something which induces scale, that's a complex idea. Scalers, free forms, are essentially a Buddhist science. Not that they understand more about it fundamentally, but at least I do in terms of Buddhist metaphysics and threefold symmetry, symmetric, antisymmetric, and antiscusymmetric. Something which is scale free is something inherently which causes alcohol rage, which is a situation of rectangular cur- ratios, which is inherent within the definable property of any forceful interaction or tensile interaction between two people. Indeed, any interaction between two people is related by a two-dimensional number, a ratio which forms a rectangle. When it's scalar, scale-free, it essentially induces alcohol rage. It, reduces, it basically pertains to the therapy of uh, alcohol therapy and AA. Another thing which I wish to consider is um, something which is unbelievable, henceforth uh, entertaining. That's something I wish to consider. Something which is... Uh, um, uh, something you remember, henceforth you accept it under anyways, just because you remember it. I guess you could call that familiarity or something. Something which is uh, inherently uh, you tend to overlook other negative aspects of it for the positive. Maybe that's called gullibility or something. It's not really gullibility. It's more like overall aesthetic effect or I call it tunneling in a lot of cases, but something which is uh, uh, lends to three-dimensional analysis, which means that uh, schizophrenia is essentially one ball behind another ball, meaning that when you have a third ball in the same line as the other two balls, you can't see what's behind it. That's what the hiding effect is. Bipolar is when you can see what color it is, but not what uh, size it is. 
psychic is when you see it from a third angle when you can see all three balls um, this is a model for modeling uh, uh, the difference between psychic schizophrenic bipolar and other mental illnesses it's kind of like being in a room where you have a picture when you can't see what the picture is it's schizophrenia when you can see every anything in the room without the lights on it's psychic power when you can see the picture is upside down it's bipolar it's autism if you see it's reflected left to right and right to left it's uh, um, Asperger's if you see it slightly rotated and it's schizoaffective if you can't see what it is but but and you don't know what what the uh, whether it's right side up or upside down like it's just a model I derived it's fairly effective another model I wish to consider is the perception model, which is a sphere with three great circles on it, or rather just circles. When the three circles are maximally opposed, like the equator, a, a, a grand circle, and another per perpendicular circle, uh, that's a healthy organism. When two of the circles are parallel to each other, coplanar, they never intersect. There are planes, that's schizophrenia, when it's bipolar, when one of them is skewered with respect to parallel lines, it doesn't line up. Just at a slight angle. That's another very effective model I've learned. I actually extrapolated that into quantum field theory to consider four dimensional hyperspheres and uh, toroidal, like uh, spheres on the hypersphere or toruses on the hypersphere, defining a, a uh, Feynman uh, uh, diagram which is non local, like two dimensional and admits a um, richer set of varieties of mental illnesses and criminology. Another thing which I wish to consider is um, something which is not perceivable, which was induces you some, to feel something anyway, I meaning it affects the unconscious but not the subconscious, or something which affects the subconscious but not the conscious, or something which affects the conscious but not the unconscious, or the conscious and not the subconscious, or the conscious and not the subconscious and the upconscious, and so forth. Two out of th two out of three, one out of three, none out of three. Um, also, I wish to consider something which is um, accepted because other people accept it, and um, that's called uh, granulation or something. It's basically a, a, a kind of like transference where you map other people's approval onto yours. Uh, there's other things I wish to consider, but for now that concludes this lecture. I went over about 20 of the different effects. I've come up with about 200. Probably take me another three hours to tell you about the other ones. Essentially, they're all just physical effects. The different, uh, they're a bit psychological, but you essentially model them as physics. You find coordinates, variables. That's what I mean about the nine matrix, though, is that you can have variables within the matrix. They're not just constants all the time. You can also have slurred effects between the components, like arabesque slurs and dragon curve slurs between the different components. I mean, that one slides into the other in a specific curvature way, kind of like a, a, a cubic equation, X cubed, will slur into the other part of the, where the uh, minima are. It slurs into a different parts, like a concave down, concave up type situation where you get a strange inversion of emotional symmetries where the emotion is not symmetric. In other words, it undoes your thought. The approach is dissimilar to the, the leaving in the sense that the derivation of thought leading up to it, even though the curve is symmetric, does not, is not symmetric to the undoing of the emotion or thought meaning that the asymmetry generates this sim it's a symmetric curve, like a dragon curve or an arabesque curve. The thing about it is is that when you go through the experience according to an arabesque inversion or a dragon curve inversion, according to the cubic symmetry of the sensation or stimulus, what you experience is a is an absolute thought, is a, a measurable thought. It doesn't just, by means of the symmetry, cancel out into nothing. You, you get something out of nothing. That concludes this lecture.